This is another video in our series of um, the use of uh, numerical weather predictions in GRIB format, and we're looking at the display in, um, in several products and uh, several different aspects of that. And this here, we are using a QTVLM, and I want to show some samples of uh, loading that. Uh, uh, loading the grid files in here and some of the some of the unique features that it has so one way so the programs loaded and I can take this uh, oh that's interesting I take this a box and then I can make oops I can make a box well is that the right one let's see yeah okay so I made a box and then I can just go here and say, uh, Grill, I think that's reading the right box, yeah. And then I could take NAM CONUS or take G, uh, GFS, GFS, and then take wind and, uh, wind, and, uh, wind and pressure, just wind and pressure for now, and download the GRIB file. And um, so that's downloading it right there and then then it automatically zooms to that region if you're off here and someplace over here you can do this click right here and it'll come back and focus on that and then the time is uh, you can change the time here like this in that area and look at that and then the readout of the data is down there at the bottom uh, you've got the wind 8.8 .8 knots you know, at 20, 28.9, 20, well, ah, that's interesting, 28 degrees, 028, um, and uh, so forth. So that's that. And then you can also set the time steps, like a one hour, let's say you want one hour, and then you can just step through it with a digital like that, or change that step size like that. And then, um, there are other features of this data, but I'm going to look at that with a different file, one that I downloaded elsewhere, because we have another video where we're identifying frontal systems on a GRIB file. And I want to just load that one into here. Um, the, 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 the settings are over here, uh, generally. Uh, uh, right over here. Here's an interest. Here's an important one. This says uh, arrows on grib point. This means show the real resolution. See, uh, all the grib files are gonna and they're gonna interpolate. So if I go out, they're gonna just spread the day the day like that, and they're gonna interpolate. But if I put the I mean, if I put the arrows on the okay, wait a minute. Let me take it off. Take it off. Oh, take it off. Now it'll interpolate and just keep putting those files there like that. Right? And you lose track of what the actual honest to goodness resolution is. But if you put the arrows on the grid points only, then they're going to stay that far apart. And this is going to be 0.25, this is going to be 0.25 degrees for the GPS. Uh, G, I mean the GFS. GFS is 0.25 degrees here. Okay, but um, super mode arrows on all slides. Okay. And a display grip time slider. That's that. Okay, so that's good. And that I put that in that that slot here. You can you can load three different grip files here. For now, I'm just going to delete that one. And I go up to grip. Let's see, is it there? Close. Yeah. It, see, if I go to slot two, there's no nothing to close because there's nothing in it. And then I can go to slot two and use these other sources to get grip files. But I'm going to take grip file one and delete it. All right, so that's that. Now, but let's load. Uh, let me go into like grip slot one, and I'm going to open up the one we've been looking at in other viewers. That's this one. And uh, the reason I want to look at this one is because we're looking at fronts. We have some uh, frontal patterns in this system. In, in fact, uh, another thing that you can do with this program is overlay images. And I, I think I may have to have a, um, a separate video of setting that up. But let's see, GRIB, weather images, open an image. And this is the one I loaded, right, say OK, right. All right, so that's a geo-referenced image of the weather map that we're talking about. This map is valid at, uh, what's it valid, 18Z. So if I want this, this data here to be valid at the same time, I would have to go to the clock and then choose uh, 18Z, OK. 
So now we've got the grib file valid at 18z and the maps valid at 18z. And you can see what the winds look like in the neighborhood of that, uh, the front. And you can see they're going this way here, they're going up out that way, and just on the other side of the front, they're going this way. So there's a big veer at the front. Likewise, do we see it here? Not so much on this front here. Well, no, down here you see it. Big, huge front on this cold front. This is coming out of the southwest, and here's coming out of the northwest. So that's a huge veer right there. Okay, but one of the things is we don't often, well, it's always valuable to get these maps, and you can always get those maps from your email request. Uh, you can get those maps. We discuss that in the textbook, how you do that. But now, what now the trick is, I want to see how we investigate where these, these fronts don't show up on the grib files when you download the grib files. So let me go to grib, uh, weather image. I want to close that image like that and just look at this. And then you see here's this file going. And let's just look at the different ways we can identify where the frontal systems are. One is you see, you can almost see, you see the veer right here a little bit. And you also see a more intense wind here. So that shows up a little more intense wind in the area. But this is, a, this is here a, um, this would be a warm front. So this is all out in front of the front and the big veers in the back. And this is a cold front here. So that's one way to look at it. You see a little bit of that in the isobars and you can change the spacing of the isobars. We have that in another video. But I want to here, I actually want to show a couple other things how this, how you can turn on different things. So we go here, what is this display? And let's look at, uh, Let's look at the rain, the rain, okay. So here is the showing the rain in the, in the uh, QTVLM. And again, you can, you can rotate this and see. Now, the question is how good is the rain in identifying the fronts? Well, it's there, but it's, it's maybe not the best way. We're, we're looking at different solutions. At different times, of the, oh, now there it looks pretty good. You see the warm front and the cold front pretty well, just in the rain pattern. Okay, so that's rain. You can look at rain, and you set that there. And then we can also look at the pressure. No, we can look at... Oh, the, it's, this, will, this program will also show the radar reflectivity. That's the GFS. Uh, GFS will forecast the simulated uh, weather radar. And then we can look at that in here in this display. So this has, uh, what I just mainly want to show is that the QT VLM has a nice display of these, uh, special, these uh, special parameters. And, and in this case, it's also a way that you can pretty well, you can see some indications of the fronts right here this way. And then you have also various, you, you have a few other ways you can modify these, uh, uh, these things. Let's see, now if we turn off the gradient, what happens there? Then what, the grade, you see here, these are, each of these shaded borders are specific values, right? And then uh, specific values, which you can read by putting the cursor, you know, putting the, Putting the cursor on there, you see that's a reflectivity of 31.8. This one's down to 25.8 and so forth. Or you can turn it on here and have it be a gradient little, uh, little, yeah, it depends on what you want. Sometimes the other, sometimes the other is better. And that's a comp re reflectivity. But now what I want to show is we also downloaded, and I showed it in another, another picture, another video. But here's another way, a nice way to look at fronts in a grib file. And that is you look at the relative humidity. And this automatically switched to 850 millibars because it knew the data was there. And that's the only place I download the humidity relative humidity at 850 millibars. And I just want to show that that shows up here. And that's a good way to see the, that's often a good way to see the, there's those fronts all, uh, all merged, or uh, uh, they've caught up with each other there. And 
Okay, so here's a here's a nice picture of the front. Okay, well I'm going to leave it there. You can change colors and you can change the size of the thickness of the lines and and things like that to meet your needs. But it's just to illustrate uh, that um, uh, QT VLM is is a very nice and it's a free product, a donation supported uh, product for grid viewing and re and navigation. Later we'll put in charts and show how the charts work. Well, I, I forgot to add another way that you can see detect a front going by. I'm still looking at the at the uh, relative humidity at the at the boundary layer, 850 millibars. Is you could just go to some point here out in front of the front, say, and just make a mediogram, make a mediogram, and you'll see uh, where. Uh, you see this winds coming in from here at this direction and then this big veer right here and it picks up to this speed so the front is passing right about this time here that you could read right from that let's take another point down here say and make a mediogram or probably this is a warm front so it's probably way in the closer to the front if I come here make a me can I do a mediogram right on top of that yeah so you see here here's the front coming by here um, there also oh maybe this is the second one this may be the this may be the first one and that's the second one anyway you have to play with that but you see here this veer the wind picks up and veers and then it uh, again picks up and veers so these are probably the two frontals fronts going by here but you have to play with that that's just another tool you can use with the the mediograms um, a lot of the um, grid viewers will have these nice mediograms